In June 2020, the remains of an unidentified female were found in the Union County, New Jersey city of Elizabeth. The unknown woman's body was located along railroad tracks in the area of the 300 block of Port Avenue. Investigators responded to the scene and transported the woman's body so that an autopsy could be performed. During the autopsy, it was determined that someone had taken the woman's life. It was also determined that the woman was black and likely between the ages of 25 and 35 at the time her life was ended. She stood approximately 5 foot 6 inches tall and weighed 125 to 140 pounds. The woman had short hair and double piercings in both ears. A forensic sketch depicting what the woman may have looked like was created and shared widely with the public, in hopes that someone might recognize her. However, with few leads to work with, investigators were unable to determine the identity of the woman despite exhaustive efforts. Since investigators were unable to identify her, she became known as the Union County Jane Doe 2020. Details of the woman's unidentified person case were entered into the National and Unidentified Missing Person System. In March 2023, three years after the discovery of the woman's remains, the Union County Prosecutor's Office partnered with Othram, Inc., to determine if advanced DNA testing could help provide an identity for the woman or a close relative. The Union County Prosecutor's Office Forensic Laboratory submitted forensic evidence to Othram's laboratory in the Woodlands, Texas. Othram scientists used forensic-grade genome sequencing to build a comprehensive DNA profile for the woman. Othram's in-house genetic genealogy team used the DNA profile in a genealogical search to provide investigative leads that were returned to investigators. Using these leads, detectives were able to narrow down the search and identify the victim as Jasmine Featherstone of Elizabeth, New Jersey. Jasmine was 23 years old at the time her life was ended and previously lived in Middletown, Connecticut. The identification was announced in June 2023. The investigation into what exactly happened to Jasmine is still ongoing by investigators. Anyone with information about the case is urged to call the Union County Prosecutor's Office and speak to Sergeant Lamar Hartsfield at 908-451-1873. Tips can be submitted anonymously by phone at 908-654-TIPS. If you provide a tip that leads to an indictment and conviction, you are eligible for a reward of up to $10,000. In October 1997, a duck hunter located a dismembered female torso in a stream known as the Ryan Slough, just north of Eureka, in Humboldt County, California. The remains were recovered, however. Attempts to identify the female were unsuccessful. In January 1998, additional remains were located and recovered on Clam Beach in California. On November 3, 1998, Wayne Adam Ford arrived at the Humboldt County Sheriff's Office main station in possession of a female body part that he carried around in a plastic bag. Ford, an ex-Marine, subsequently admitted to taking the lives of several women throughout the North State, including the unidentified female. According to him, it was four women in total whose lives he ended. Investigators interviewed Ford, who worked as a long-haul trucker numerous times, obtaining descriptive details of the woman. Ford's home was searched as part of the investigation. Investigators located additional remains belonging to the female recovered from the slough. Attempts to identify the woman were made, but ultimately were unsuccessful. Ford was born in Petaluma, California on December 3, 1961. His parents divorced when he was 10. 
He dropped out of high school and enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps, where he served six years before being honorably discharged in 1985. In November 1980, he was hit by a drunk driver, causing a head injury and leaving him in a coma for nine days. According to his relatives, his personality drastically changed after the incident. Beginning in 1983, he had escalating problems at work, with psychological decline necessitating several hospitalizations. Ford was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. He had a series of scrapes with the law, including allegations of beating and robbing a woman in 1986 in Garden Grove, California. In 1990, he was arrested for animal cruelty, for which he served a brief jail sentence in San Clemente, California. Between 1997 and 1998, he took the lives of at least four women while working. He lived in a trailer park in Arcata, California. His first victim was the unknown female whose life he had taken in October 1997. The second victim was 26-year-old Tina Renee Gibbs. She lost her life on May 16, 1998, near Las Vegas, Nevada. Her body was found on June 2nd near Buttonwillow, California. The third victim was 25-year-old Lynette Dayon White. He ended her life on September 25, 1998 in Ontario, California, then dumped her body near Lodi, California. The fourth victim was 29-year-old Patricia Ann Thames, whose life was taken in Hesperia, California. Her body was found on October 23, 1998, in an aqueduct in San Bernardino, California. In June of 2006, Ford was convicted of taking the four women's lives in a San Bernardino County court and was sentenced to be executed in August 2006. He is still currently behind bars at the San Quentin State Prison in California. Through the years, Humboldt County Sheriff's Office investigators never gave up on attempting to identify Ford's unknown female victim. They routinely searched missing person reports from all of the West Coast to obtain leads. Using DNA, investigators were able to confirm that the remains located on Clam Beach were also that of the unknown female. The DNA was entered into both the California Missing Persons DNA Database and the National Unidentified Persons DNA Index. The DNA profile was routinely searched against profiles from both missing persons and other human remains in the combined DNA Index system. No profile matches were ever made. The case was eventually entered into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons system. Humboldt County Sheriff's Office Sheriff William Hunsell created a cold case unit in 2021. He assigned two investigators to exclusively review their unsolved cases for new leads. In December of 2022, the Sheriff's Office and the California Department of Justice partnered with Othram Inc to determine if advanced forensic DNA testing could help establish the identity of the unknown female or a close relative. The California Department of Justice sent Othram a DNA extract from the unknown woman's remains. Othram scientists used forensic-grade genome sequencing to build a comprehensive DNA profile for the victim. Utilizing this profile and forensic genealogy, a potential DNA match was developed for a close relative of the victim. Investigators contacted the relative, inquiring if they had any family members that were possibly missing. The relative stated that their family member, Carrie, had been missing since the mid-1990s. Investigators were able to track down Carrie's sister, Kathy, who confirmed that Carrie's last contact with family was in 1997. Kathy provided investigators with a DNA sample, which was then compared to the DNA sample from the unknown female's remains. These DNA profiles were confirmed to be a genealogical match, 
officially identifying the remains as that of Carrie Ann Cummings, born in 1972. She was 25 years old when her life was taken. During her last contact with family in 1997, Carrie was suffering from untreated mental illness and told family that she was couch surfing in the Eugene, Oregon area. Despite multiple offers from her family members, she refused to come home. Kathy said, Carrie was beautiful, funny, smart, and an artist. She was great at making us laugh. It is devastating what mental illness can do in a span of only two short years. Kathy told investigators that after Carrie went missing, her parents tried to report her missing in Arizona and Oregon. They even hired a private investigator, but due to laws surrounding the report of missing persons at that time, a missing person's report was never taken. Therefore, Carrie was never listed as missing person or entered into any national missing persons database. Unfortunately, back then they were told that Carrie was an adult, that she had chosen the lifestyle, and that if she was not a threat to herself or others, there was nothing that law enforcement could do, Kathy said. As the internet expanded, I took to searching the Name Us website when I was missing her, scanning for mention of her tattoo and searching through the pictures of the Jane Doe's. She was dearly loved. The Humboldt County Coroner's Division is working with family members to release Carrie's remains for burial with other family members that are not alive anymore. I would like to thank the California Department of Justice DNA Lab and Othram for once again providing outstanding work and assistance in solving this case, Sheriff William Hunsell said. While we can't take away the pain of loss, we hope that this identification can help bring closure to Kerry's family and the community. I am thankful for the dedication of our investigators who never gave up on Kerry and continue to seek resolution for the outstanding cases that remain to be solved. While investigators are still convinced that Wayne Adam Ford is responsible, anyone with information about this case is asked to contact investigator Mike Fridley at 707-441-3024. On October 26, 1978, the Pershing County Sheriff's Office received a report that human remains were found in Pershing County, Nevada, approximately 13 miles west of Imlay near Scosa Road. Officers with the Pershing County Sheriff's Office responded to the scene and located the human remains inside of a garment bag buried in a shallow grave. Investigators collected several evidentiary items at the scene, including women's clothing inside of the garment bag. The clothing items included a dark green sweater with a white safety pin attached to the front, dark green trousers, and a long-sleeved pink sweater. The unidentified individual's remains were transferred to Washoe Medical Center in nearby Reno, Nevada, where an autopsy was performed. The medical examiner determined that the remains belonged to a Caucasian female who was approximately 40 to 50 years old at the time when her life was lost. Due to the condition of her remains, it was unclear what exactly happened to the woman but investigators believed foul play was involved. Unfortunately, there was no identifying information on the victim's body found during the course of the investigation. In May of 1979, the Pershing County Sheriff's Office requested the investigative assistance of the Nevada Department of Public Safety Investigation Division, which led to an extensive investigation in an attempt to identify the woman. The investigation included the submission of dental records for comparison purposes. They worked with the FBI to obtain identifying information from the articles of clothing. A mitochondrial DNA profile was obtained from the woman. A facial reconstruction was made to not only give you nightmares, but also in hopes that someone recognized the woman. 
investigators entered the case into the National Missing and Unidentified Persons system. Investigators followed up on many tips and compared numerous missing persons reports without establishing a significant lead. Despite investigators' efforts, the identity of the woman remained a mystery. She then became known as the 1978 Imlay Jane Doe. For over 44 years, she would remain unidentified. Then, in March 2022, investigators, along with NamUs, enlisted the assistance of Othram in hopes of identifying the unknown woman. Funding for the advanced DNA testing and forensic genetic genealogy used in this case was provided by NamUs, a national clearinghouse that assists the criminal justice community with the investigation and resolution of missing, unidentified, and unclaimed persons cases across the United States and its territories. Forensic evidence was submitted to Othram's laboratory in The Woodlands, Texas, and Othram scientists used forensic-grade genome sequencing to develop a comprehensive DNA profile for the unidentified woman. Othram's in-house genealogy team used the profile to develop investigative leads that were returned to law enforcement investigators. David Middleman, the CEO at Othram, said, That allows you to find people who are even remotely related. It may not be the person that you have over for the holidays, but it will be a genetic relative, maybe a third or fourth cousin. Investigators were then able to determine that the unidentified woman is 67-year-old Florence Charleston of Cleveland, Ohio. Detective Sean Coster said, The genealogy profile that was processed through these remains was successfully matched to a couple in Ohio. Nevada State Police ended up finding and testing the DNA of Florence's granddaughter, Donna Taylor, and in March of 2023 found a 100% familial match between Donna and the remains found near Imlay, Nevada. When the detective first contacted me, I thought it was a joke, Donna said. A subsequent investigation revealed that Florence moved to Portland, Oregon sometime in the early 1970s, and family members lost contact with her around 1978. Relatives of Florence say she was a fun-loving person who was easy to be around. Diane Liggett, Florence's niece, said, Every kid should have an aunt like her. We all used to tell stories in our family for years how much fun she was growing up with her. We all missed her when she went up to Portland and basically disappeared shortly thereafter. Florence was born in 1911 and was happily married until her husband passed away. Her granddaughter, Donna Taylor, said, After she lost her husband, she seemed to become a little needy with men. Donna Taylor was still a child when Florence moved from their hometown of Cleveland, Ohio, to an apartment building on Southeast Milwaukee Avenue in Portland with her boyfriend. Donna said, The guy that she relocated to Portland with, he had contacted us saying that they had gone to Hawaii to look for a condo to purchase, and when they flew back to the Portland airport, she ran away from him. I really believed that she became homeless and just lost her life on the street. That is how I coped with it. Donna said the last time she ever talked to her grandma was over the phone in 1977. She was a junior in high school. This was a year before Florence's body was found. When everything is over and done with, I am going to bring her back to Cleveland for a proper burial. I need her back. She has been in limbo all this time. I will put her in the cemetery with her son, my dad. The investigation into what exactly happened with Florence is still ongoing. Anyone with information about the case is asked to contact the Nevada Department of Public Safety Investigation Division at 775-684-7457.
On January 27, 1996, the body of an unidentified female was located by a passerby in Beaumont, California. The discovery was made in a rural, hilly area in a ravine south of the eastbound Highway 60 near Gilman Springs Road. A couple driving through the area flagged down a law enforcement officer and informed him of the body off the side of the road. Investigators who arrived at the scene believed that her life had been taken a few hours prior to the discovery. The victim appeared Hispanic, American Indian, or possibly Asian. She was found on her back with a gunshot wound to her head. There was also evidence that she had been assaulted. The victim did not have any identification or a purse. Her clothing was clean and in good condition. There were no investigative leads at the time of the incident. The woman's short tandem repeat profile was obtained and entered into missing and unidentified person section in California. She was somewhere between 30 and 45 years old. Both her hair and her eyes were brown. She was about 5 foot 1 inch tall and weighed 130 pounds. The woman had a surgical scar on her right abdomen. Surrounding agencies were contacted regarding possible missing persons, matching the description of the Jane Doe. Her case was also entered into NamUs. Detectives had a composite sketch of her completed and utilized local media in an attempt to generate investigative leads. Eventually, with all leads exhausted and still no closer to identifying the woman, the case went cold. Recently, the Riverside County Regional Cold Case Team partnered with Othram to use advanced DNA testing and forensic genetic genealogy to generate new leads in the case. Forensic DNA evidence was sent to Othram and their scientists using forensic-grade genome sequencing to build a comprehensive genealogical profile. The profile was returned to law enforcement investigators, who then used the profile to conduct genetic genealogy research. Using genealogy and other public databases such as the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, investigators located the victim's four daughters. The California Department of Justice Riverside Crime Lab, through its Missing and Unidentified Persons System, was then able to positively identify the victim as Juana Rosas Zagal of the Los Angeles area. The announcement of the investigation was made on June 26, 2023. She was 41 years old when her life was taken. One of Juana's daughters said, He destroyed my family. He did not just take the life of one person. He took the lives of all of us. I really, really wish if somebody knows something, they can let us know. Because for me, all of this is so difficult. But at the same time, I really want to know who is responsible. Detectives believe there are still friends, neighbors, or colleagues of Juana who may be able to provide more information to help clarify her disappearance. Anyone who knew Juana or has any further information is asked to contact detectives at 951-955-0740 or 951-955-2777.